The Hong Kong tram, affectionately called the Ding Ding for the sound it makes to warn pedestrians of its approach. The double-decker tramway system opened in 1904 when Hong Kong was still under British rule. Today, the tram is still going strong with a ridership of more than 130,000 each day. Since its inception, the Ding Ding has run on electricity, meaning it emits zero roadside emissions. Now, one entrepreneur in Nigeria has also turned to electrification to bring two and three-wheeled electric vehicles to market. Ibadan, Nigeria's third largest city and a major transport hub for the country. Today, Caleb Andran is on his way home after a long day of deliveries. He's driving a motorcycle taxi, born in local parlance, in Okada, designed and manufactured by Nigerian startup Max. A vehicle subscription platform started in 2015. We've gone from just trying to solve originally e-commerce problems to really trying to solve social infrastructure problems, but still leveraging mobility as the pathway to our end goal. Shinedu Azado is the co-founder and president of New Ventures at Max. At their headquarters in Lagos, Azado says that electrifying their fleet can go a long way in combating carbon emissions. We've rolled out electric motorcycles. It took us about four years to build and actually roll out motorcycles that were commercially viable. We've gone out and designed and built a vehicle that is a um, rocket for the market and delivers value. Engineering professor Lynette Chia says EVs have a major role to play in the future of mobility. Electrification is extremely important in, in many cities, again, for transportation to decarbonize to achieve a low carbon emissions. So we'll definitely need to electrify our vehicles and couple that with the greening of our electricity grid. So with these two components, I think we can achieve our low carbon goals. This is a two-wheeler. Um, this has got battery swap technology. It's got a storage box in place of where the fuel tank is. Now this will give you 160 kilometers. I'll give you an example of some of the performance. Drivers of the company's electric two- and three-wheelers, who Max calls champions, can own their vehicles through various leasing and financing options. The company says at least a 1,000 drivers have become new vehicle owners since the program began in 2019. Using the motorcycle for work allowed me to afford to pay for my child's school fees, so I'm very happy that the motorcycle is now mine. Azado says Max is currently deploying more than 2,000 drivers each month. This year, the startup raised $31 million in Series B funding, jump-starting its expansion plans in markets like Ghana and Egypt. Back at their warehouse in Ibadan, a two-hour drive from Lagos, mechanics are assembling new vehicles and painting them Max's trademark yellow. The company says 5% of its fleet is currently electric. They plan for half of new deployments to be EVs by 2025. And we assemble these vehicles in our local market. So in Nigeria, we have a massive plant in Ibadan where we assemble the vehicles, uh, electric and, and gas engine as well. And then we deploy them into the markets where they're supposed to operate. According to the United Nations Environment Program, the global vehicle fleet is slated to double by 2050, with 90% of its growth taking place in low to middle income countries. The transport sector is expected to emit more than 30% of total greenhouse gas emissions in the future. For companies like Max, electrifying the continent's motorbikes and three-wheelers is one solution to the problem. A 2022 report from McKinsey found that there are more than 30 EV players in the region, including Tanzanian startup KP Motors, with its electric pickup unveiled this year, or Auto Truck East Africa's electric tuk-tuk developed in Kenya. Still, the report finds structural hurdles may slow down adoption across the continent, whether it's unreliable supply of electricity or high upfront costs. We find that in most countries, the electric vehicle over the lifetime is much cheaper than the internal combustion engine vehicle. As if you are a relatively low income individual who uses the bike primarily as your means of work, it's very hard for you to afford an extra $100, $200, $300 on the upfront cost. 
Asado is hopeful that maps can one day solve multiple problems in Nigeria and beyond, whether it's urban mobility, cutting carbon emissions, or creating job opportunities and pathways to vehicle ownership. With electric vehicles, we're not just improving driving out costs for the drivers. A core part of that too is to be able to build a world and live a world for my children's children's children and for your children's children's children. To be able to you know, enjoy and potentially see a better world than we've seen.